was expected roughly this piece of news. Talk to us. What what sort of opportunities does something slow moving as this create for you? And what doesn't what, what does not change? Well, I, I think I think the inclusion is important because uh, they encourage the Chinese market to open up. Um, there are a lot of uh, operations stuff that have been made easier for foreigners to to gain access. But I think in terms of the increasing flow that comes into the market, uh, even before the inclusion, we are seeing an, an increasing amount from last year's CGB on average. We saw 35 billion renminbi um, worth of uh, flows. This year, we are looking at 50. So I think post-inclusion, October next year, from week B, um, that flow should uh, increase more significantly as more investors are looking at um, the higher yielding market as an opportunity. Uh, that said, though, how, how how far inland, uh, let's put it that way, do you think uh, foreign money is going to go? I mean, sovereigns, I would imagine quasi-sovereigns are almost a given here. Uh, do you see foreign money going all the way into high yield? I think high yield is probably a market that is that will attract capital a bit slower. I mean, if you compare the credit spread between okay. um, the offshore and onshore market, the offshore market does offer higher credit spread for similar names. Um, as onshore, so we think most of the money will flow into the interest rate bonds for now. Edmund, what do you like then domestically in the Chinese market? What are spreads between local government bonds and sovereigns telling you? Um, local government bond is actually the largest uh, market in, in onshore. The outstanding amount is higher than um, central government bonds, but we still prefer central government bonds and policy banks because the liquidity is not great in a local government bond space, and you get about uh, between 20 to 40 basis points spread against uh, government bonds, but the liquidity is not compensating you for it, for it. Do investors now to start need to look at the, the fact that you know, sovereign bonds here in China can be used as a hedge then? Uh, if you're also investing in equities? And, and what are the similarities with, with what we see in the US? Is that going to be sustained, do you think, that trend? I think, yes. Uh, that's how our multi-asset um, colleagues are positioned as well. I mean, they do see long bond position as a hedge to equities when uh, equities uh, rally. So I think, yeah, that, that, would, be, that would be a possible uh, alternative for hedging uh, instrument. Ed, but... Right. Uh, may, part of making that decision, I would imagine, is having an assumption on wh whether you think the slow-moving correction, let's put it that way, in China's bond market is over. Where do you think rates go short term? We're actually more bullish um, on the rates outlook compared to the market. We think that um, PBOC has tightened interest rates a bit too quickly for the economy to digest, despite China having shown better sequential growth compared to the other parts of the world. Uh, but we think that from, from this point um, of, the, of the economy, we think that uh, PBOC has no need to continue to tighten the monetary policy. So there's more room for bond yields to go lower in a couple of months from now. Okay, uh, Edmund, just hold on a second. Uh, it's a time of the day when we have our daily fix out of the PBOC. 681.21 um, is that level, your midpoint for the day out of the, uh, the Chinese Central Bank. Uh, I'm just looking for my estimate here. 680, do I have my estimate? 681.38, so 17 pips uh, on the stronger side uh, of the estimate. Edmund, let me bring you back. So we talked about rates, and obviously that affects where the currency goes short term or influences where that goes. Uh, just to pivot here, the big news yesterday, corporate bond market, uh, the story on Evergrande, uh, we were talking during the break, you say there was nothing new. Markets deal in probabilities yeah. here, and you know, we all know if something does happen to Evergrande, it's not going to be limited to Evergrande. How are you approaching what's the developments for that company, and do you think there is a big chance this becomes disruptive in the form of higher, you know, wider spreads, what have you? Yeah, I think, I think everyone expects Evergrande to be, I guess, big enough. It is, it is big enough, um, a company within the property space to affect not just itself. It's, it's different from the Taho uh, default that happened a couple of months ago. If it does have, if it does have a credit event, then it would impact the, the other bonds. Um, I, think, I think what most people would expect is for regulators to um, ease 
um, some of the policies um, in, in the next few months when developers are facing um, issues, especially with the ones who have shown effort to deleverage. So it's hard to make a call whether they would uh, default at this point in time. But um, the company has came out to say that the report was uh, false. But everyone knows that uh, they, they do have um, quite a bit of uh, uh, debt to, to, to reduce um, in, 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 in next 12 months.